Is this mic on? Yes, it is. Good morning, everyone. 
Good morning and welcome to the January 2016 edition of the Wikimedia Foundation Monthly Metrics Meeting. Here's our agenda for today. I'll take us through the welcome, then Lila will speak about strategy, followed by Lewis, who will speak about the Funds Dissemination Committee and WMAF. After that, Robla and Kim will present on the Wikimedia Developer Summit that recently concluded followed by Boriana speaking about the engagement survey. Uh, after that, Kevin LaDuke will present WMF top-level metrics. And at the end, we're gonna kick it back to all of you for a question and answer session. We're welcoming several new colleagues this month. Julianne Joe in finance, Mark Brent and Jack Rabat in advancement, Deborah Tankersley, Peter Pchelko, Emanuela Roca, Luca Toscano, and Nathaniel Schaff in technology, and Leanne Schreibstein, also in advancement. We're also welcoming interns, contractors, and volunteers, Jane Pardini in legal, Anisha Mangalik, also in legal, Andromeda Yelton in CE, Hilary Burgess in admin, and Nathan Denabal in finance. Please welcome our new colleagues. We're also celebrating anniversaries. Before I read off the names, I wanna congratulate everyone here and thank them for the time and effort they put in to making our mission a reality. It's an honor to work with all of you. Aaron Palmer, Corey Floyd, Corey Floyd, sorry, Corey. <laughs> and Brian Gersel are celebrating one year. Anne Gomez, Sam Smith, Alex Wang, and Gilles Dubuc are celebrating two years. Doreen Dunnikin and Runa Bhattacharji are celebrating three years. Jody Lore, Stephen Laporte, and Andrew Otto are celebrating four years. And finally, Dario Tarbarelli is celebrating five years at WMF. <laughs> Next, I'm going to throw it over to Zach, who's going to speak with us about Wikipedia Day. Hello. Hi, hi. Tomorrow is Wikipedia Day. We will be 15 years old. Yeah. Oh, noise. So there is a website. It's 15.wikipedia.org. And there you'll find the stories of Wikimedians around the world, uh, notes about the endowment, and our annual report all reflected there. There will also be a party, a party right here. So we hope to see you tomorrow, 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, right here, we will have 10 works of data visualization all around here, and some of the artists will be in attendance as well. So be excited, champagne, cake, data visualization. Can't go wrong. <laughs> we also have shirts. They will be on the store shortly. I'm wearing one right here. This is the Moai of Easter Island. And here's Amy showing us Amelia Earhart, also known as Queen of the Air. So. Please join me and the rest of the movement around the world in celebrating 15 years of Wikipedia tomorrow. Thanks so much. Yeah. And now, allow me to introduce Lila. Okay, okay. Thanks, Zach. This is really exciting. I'm really looking forward to tomorrow. Good morning, everybody. Okay, I'm going to be quite boring today because I'm going to walk you through a bunch of the details that we, uh, we've done on the strategy. If you remember, I promised you that uh, we're going to go through the process in December to engage as many of you as possible and help us shape some of the strategies uh, for our next 24 to 36 months. And then to prepare us to take that to our community this month. And, the group, and our team has been working really diligently to get that ready. If you remember, we, we focused our strategies on the three pillars that come directly from our vision. The reach, community, and knowledge. Imagine the world in each every human being, right? Every human being is reach. How do we reach every human being? Uh, can freely share, 
That's our community, sharing, creating, collaborating, and finally the sum of all knowledge, and the, the, that's the pillar around knowledge, of course. So, um, of course, we have the strategy for the movement that was created originally in, 20, uh, in 2010, and as we look at it, and as we look at the goals of that uh, strategy, of that, that strategic plans, all of those goals are still relevant today. All of those goals address those three pillars, and they're all still out there. Uh, they ha we have not hit those milestones. So as we were looking at the strategy, we really wanted to think about what we, what us, all of us, our employees, as the foundation can do to really make impact, to help our movement overall. What are we accountable for? What can we do? So we focused, uh, we put our focus directly, squarely on the strategic plan for the foundation and making it a little bit more short term so we can iterate uh, a little bit faster and adjust faster. So we, uh, we gave ourselves a time frame of 24 to 36 months. And uh, as we, as uh, as the foundation have talked about it, we also looked at it from the perspective of our mission. And this is the first part of our mission that's really um, basically gives us more of the gist of, uh, of what we do every day. We're supporting the people, we're supporting our community, that's a big component of that. We're creating, the community is creating um, educational content under free license, that's, that's our community and that's the knowledge. And we, dis we help disseminate it effectively and globally. That's reach, that's getting out there and putting this content that our communities create in front of, uh, in front of everybody around the world. So we've done a lot of work leading up to this. Uh, last year, we've done a ton of work really trying to understand where are we in the world? What have we done? What is working and what is not? And where has the world gone meanwhile? Because there are a lot of changes that have happened in the last five years, but even more importantly, the last 15 years in the world of free knowledge, in the world of free internet. That has really evolved. And there are a lot of risks out there that we really need to be facing and we really need to be addressing, but there are also a lot of opportunities. So we've done this, uh, those studies and we have, uh, it, it really took, took a while to, uh, to figure out uh, the details there. And then uh, over the last few months, we have worked to propose some of the strategic approaches to identify those pillars. You have helped us develop 18 approaches in three focus areas that we will put in front of the community so that we have some start starting points for people to think about. So thank you, everybody who around here who has participated either directly or indirectly, it, it, it really helped us shape our thinking. So uh, thank you for doing that. And now we are at a place where we're developing and building the strategic plan and that's where we're going to go out and do this together with our community so they can help us figure out what is the most important for the WMF to do? How can we help best? And as you know, we already kicked off the annual planning process. Those strategies will turn into specific goals and specific tactics as you work with your teams to put them into the actual plan. And as you look at it overall, we're, we're right here. This is uh, the orchestration of the overall strategic planning and that leads, over, uh, leads into the actual plan for the year. So this is what we have done. You have participated. We've looked at uh, what might be our, uh, as a WMF, where can we make the most impact and what is the most important uh, to address urgently. And of course, as you know, the next thing uh, is, the most important thing is the January 18th through February 15th, it's a whole month of community consultation and serving. And I want to th really thank the team for getting this organized and everybody who is involved in putting this together. So how did we, what considerations did we take into place? We looked at where can we create most impact? Our job is really to make a difference. So we need to focus on that. For every dollar that we spend or every euro that we spend, we wanna create the most impact on our mission. What are the greatest challenges that we're facing as a movement? Not just as WMF as an organization, but as a movement overall, those are the forces out there that we need to be addressing. And finally, what is our unique value? What can we do uniquely as an organization, as employees, to help our community? The community would, would have a hard time doing without us. So we'll, as we looked at our impact, we looked at 
uh, what's the impact within the movement, where we play proactive versus supportive role, how can we measure our act actions, how do we define success, not just quantitatively, but also qualitatively, and what is our unique capacity. As we looked at our challenges, of course, we looked at the decline in uh, uh, and readership since 2013, where we are observing that, and editorship, editorship since 2007, how can we affect this? We've had some really good recent trades in, uh, in editorship, but readership is a big, big consideration. We are looking at the world overall and the consolidation of media and internet access uh, under big umbrellas of corporations and how that affects free knowledge and how that affects Wikimedia. We looked at changes in, um, in user behavior and the rise of mobile. Uh, we looked at different types of content that has emerged in the last five to 10 years, increased production of digital knowledge across the board and organizations that produce it, especially glam institutions, and our own challenges. The things that we need to address, legacy systems, for example, we need to, we need to be looking at that our own policies that, that potentially can, uh, can slow us down. And of course, within our unique value, uh, what do we identify as that? The ability to have our global perspective and to help coordinate across our movement, to help facilitate conversations, serving immediate community needs, but also looking at the needs of the movement a little bit farther around the curve. And finally, of course, filling the essential administrative duties, as of course, you know. So as we looked at that, and as we heard all of you here, the staff and the, the few community members that we started the conversation with, we, uh, uh, we started looking at reach as probably the most uh, existential issue right now in front of us and most riskiest. It doesn't, of course, we still need to be addressing all of the three pillars, but the first one is, is something that's staring us in the face right now. So what are the a summary of, our, of, our, of, our, of your findings of, of, of this group of people? Um, if you were to summarize it, is that for every human to share in the sum of knowledge, Wikipedia must adapt and anticipate the changing needs of people around the world. We must partner better with our communities to reinvigorate our original promise of open collaboration and mutual respect, harness emerging technologies, include new forms of knowledge, and reach out to wider audience of readers and contributors with more of the knowledge that they create. So uh, this is the first draft summary based on what we've heard from you. So as we go to our community, similar consultation is going to happen. We tweaked it a little bit ba uh, based on how you interact with that. We're going to po po uh, post uh, three major questions that you guys have brought up as big challenges. And we're going to put uh, top six themes, strategic themes that you have brought up, pulled out for us and ask our community members to react to them, to, uh, to add to them and, uh, and to, to help us prioritize. I'm not going to go through this in detail here. This deck is out there for everybody to review. Please take a look at it. Um, and I really, really encourage you, even if you have participated in the internal consultation, to please uh, participate in the external consultation as well. This is our strategy. This is your strategy. This is, this is, uh, this is the strategy for the organization. So it's really important that you voice what, what you find, what you think is important to you. So the consultation will launch on January 18th. It's going to be public. We're going to be hold internal uh, sprint here to participate. We're gonna provide pizza and, uh, and drinks and please join us. Uh, executive team is going to be here uh, to respond and collaborate, but it is open to all of you. So please join us. Uh, and on February 15th, after it closed, we're going to synthesize this work and put it back to the community to make sure that we got it right. That work is going to help us, help us guide our annual plan for next year and help us set the goals for that annual plan. And with that, I think hopefully I didn't go over time too much. Thanks everybody. This is, this is where I admit that uh, going over time is a little okay today. Um, 
because uh, I'm going to be focused on FDC, and I will, uh, for once, uh, skip the community uh, update. We'll get back to that next month. So I want to talk about FDC. Um, how many of you have heard the phrase FDC? Uh -huh. How many of you can actually tell me what that acronym, what that acronym expands to? All right. Okay. That's that's actually more than I thought. How many? Oh. This is what I get for not clicking through the slides fast enough. For once, I'm trying to have some pacing. All right. <laughs> How many of you feel comfortable uh, that you could explain what FDC actually does? All right, okay, that's, that's, that's pretty good. Um, so this is the Funds Dissemination Committee. Uh, and, and the reason I'm up here to talk with you a little bit about them today, to make sure that we're all on the same page about what, we, what they do, why they do it, um, including, um, Hey, this picture is from this year's meeting, including, um, you know, I'm not going to name all of them. Uh, we're going to talk today not just about who they are and what they do, but critically how they're going to be involved with us in the upcoming year's uh, strategy and budget process in our annual planning process for next year. Uh, for those of you who are watching on the stream, community, hello. I'm going to be probably sloppier and worse than usual in our, uh, in our use of our today. Um, because this is about the WMF annual planning process, usually when I talk about our, I'm going to be referring to WMF. So what, what do these wonderful people do? Um, to quote from their charter, their role is to help make decisions about how to effectively allocate movement funds to achieve Wikimedia's vision, mission, vision, and strategy. In other words, they help take a look at how we're spending money. Right? They're elected by the editor community. Um, and I'm sure many of you have actually voted for them in the past. Uh, so they're directly representative. At the same time, they also bring a lot of skills to the table. Right? We have folks in there. Uh, with backgrounds in accounting, um, folks with a lot of long experience in the movement, but also in movement organizations, right? In making sure that we are translating uh, our spending into impact on the mission. In practice, uh, the biggest thing that they do is review the annual plan grant requests from large affiliates. Right? This means that every year they're looking uh, at around $5 million uh, in spending from our affiliates, taking a look at how that's spent and making sure that it has impact. Uh, the resources team, Winifred, Katie, uh, this is your moment of glory, uh, get um, support them. What, I don't even get a smile from Winifred out of that. Oh, all right. Um, and uh, yeah, supported by our resources team. They meet, meet twice a year. Um, we've submitted part of our budget to them uh, in 2012 and 2013. In 2014, uh, let's not put too fine a point on it, uh, we regressed. We had a much shorter period for public review. We did not formally submit any part of our budget to the FTC. Uh, needless to say, they then went ahead and looked at what we posted publicly afterwards anyway. Uh, and they weren't very satisfied with what they found. Uh, in their last meeting, which they had here a few months ago, uh, they said that they lamented the current state of affairs. I love that word. It's a word we should use more often instead of some of the harsher things that we, that we sometimes do. And they said specifically, the FDC recommends that the WMF submit its 2016-2017 annual plan to FDC and participate in the community review and the FDC review processes. Uh, that came at a really good time, actually, for us organizationally. We were looking at what we wanted to do for the next annual plan. And uh, we were, uh, you know, Garfield had, uh, had, had stepped away. And so we were trying to understand, hey, you know, what's our timeline? What are we doing here? How are we doing it? Um, and this seemed like uh, a pretty good way to think about it, to frame our conversations internally at the executive level about how we would go through our annual plan process this year. And so why, so we decided uh, at the end of the day that we're 
uh, mostly going to go through with that recommendation from the FDC. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about this both here this morning uh, and later with you in departments, but uh, we're doing this, uh, you know, I'm talking about it here today to help give you some preview of that. So why are we doing that? Because uh, we talked to this in my department uh, last, uh, last week, and a quarter of my department is in, you know, has jobs pretty directly related to FDC, and yet they were still asking questions about why we were doing this, right? So there are four, uh, to me, critical reasons why we are uh, submitting our annual plan to the FDC. First of all, it's going to give us good quality signal. It's gonna give us good input as to what we're doing, how we're prioritizing. As Lila was just saying, uh, that's something that we're seeking in a lot of ways right now, right? To try to make sure uh, that we're using resources most effectively, and this is one of the ways we're gonna do it. Um, another reason, uh, as you know, there's been plenty of tension for many years, this is not a new thing, uh, between WMF and uh, the editor community. So modeling the best practices, modeling the practices that we ask for from other people, from our largest, uh, from our largest uh, affiliates, uh, we think that will be a good, a good step towards helping rebuild trust, right? And that's something that will help all of us every time we are working with communities. It was a nice theme at the UnConference, uh, as, well as, my, as well as my team's UnConference, and uh, you know, I think it's a meaningful step. It does model our movement values, right? We value transparency, we value accountability, um, and part of this process is about how we report out, right? So we think we're doing the right thing in that respect. Finally, as I mentioned, this is a process that exists. We do not have to wait for Jaime to say, hey, um, you know, what are we doing here? Uh, because by February, we felt really it would be too late to be starting our annual planning process. Um, so we're excited for Jaime to join us, but we also needed to get started on our planning and thinking about this you know, towards the end of last year. And so the FTC process re represented a way to do that. So what does this mean for you all, right? For the people in this room, for I, I suspect a lot of the people watching on the live stream, the first and most important thing you need to know is that our, our deadlines, WMF's deadlines, are no longer WMF's deadlines. Last year, a lot of us, including I was a prime offender. Oh yeah, annual plan deadlines. There's a lot of stuff in the air. I'm gonna push that out one day. That's gonna slip one week. This deadline is no longer our deadline. We owe it to the community. We have committed to the community that we're gonna put our annual plan out there on April 1st, right? That means uh, that is a hard commitment from us. That means when somebody is asking you about annual plan stuff and you have the temptation to say, well, I've got this other fire over here, that other fire is gonna have to smolder for a day. Right, um, this commitment is real hard, solid, uh, and if we blow it, it will be um, it will be a black eye. Right? Um, it means different forms and requirements for those of you who have been involved in the annual planning process in past years. Um, it's been uh, pretty heavy on narrative uh, and heavy on finance, uh, but not necessarily very clear on specific, clear, measurable, actionable goals. Um, the, the evaluation folks in front of me are nodding and smiling. This is the biggest print they've seen SMART in in a long time. Uh, um, for, for those of you who don't know what SMART is, it's specific, measurable, actionable. Oh, help me out here, James. Right, there's a couple different R's. Uh, <laughs> and time bound, right? Um, this is something we'll be asking for everybody to think through, right? Um, we, we realize, of course, that in some cases folks are doing experiments and we need to have some flexibility around that. Um, but it's going to, we think it'll help us communicate both internally and externally what it is we're doing. Um, it means we're going to explain ourselves publicly. Lila mentioned the sprints we'll be doing around strategy. It also means that during the month of April, we'll be back, right? Um, how each department or each team manages this is probably gonna be different from uh, team to team or department to department, uh, but we will be responding to public comment and public feedback on these documents as it happens, right? There will be a 30-day public comment period, uh, and after that, uh, in May, we'll be incorporating that feedback, right? Um, we, uh, as I'll get to in a second, this doesn't mean that the 
community is going to rewrite our annual plan for us on a one month basis. You should not expect for your hair to be on fire in May, uh, but you should expect um, that you're going to have some serious, uh, some serious thoughtful quality feedback that may cause us to rejigger some of our uh, rejigger, rethink, reevaluate uh, some of our uh, some of our goals. So, what does it not mean, right? I said right there. I said right now. I said just now that you're not going to be rewriting your entire annual plan in May based on community feedback. Um, this is. I think it's important to understand. This is an experiment for everybody. FDC is a little nervous about getting a budget that is uh, you know, nine times bigger than the budgets they have traditionally reviewed, right? We are understandably a little nervous about uh, you know, the idea of putting this all out in public for a huge, uh, you know, wave of comment in a way that we've that we've never done before, right? Um, and so part of what we agreed with FDC when discussing this with them is that they, unlike what they do with traditional uh, affiliates, there will be no dollar allocation, right? Um, so for those of you who are familiar with the process, FDC can say to our affiliates, you know what, we don't think your plan is good enough, uh, we're going to cut your budget, right? That's a painful process for everyone involved, even at a smaller scale. Uh, I think everyone involved acknowledges that, that would be very difficult at our scale, right? So at least this year, there will be no dollar allocation. Do not expect, when you are interacting with communities, um, do, do that as peers and partners with them, not out of fear for your job, right? Um, less is going to be more, right? Uh, FDC uh, asks uh, typically for a whole lot of detail on every major program that uh, an organization is working on. Uh, we are dialing that back just a little bit, um, both so that we don't overwhelm them and so that we don't overwhelm ourselves, right? That means we'll, uh, we'll be asking, the details are probably outside of the scope of this, right? But we are not going to be inundating uh, the community with every single project on your team. We'll be limiting that to something like two per team or four per team, depending on how you want to count. Right. The final thing to remember uh, is that this is an experiment, right? We are going to learn from it, improve our transparency, improve our accountability, uh, and uh, hopefully, I think in the long run, improve our ability to plan by doing this. So next steps about this. Um, department leads are going to be reaching out to all of you about planning uh, in uh, the end of this week or next week. Uh, some of you, I know Wes has already reached out to uh, his department leads. Uh, I have worked with all of my department uh, last week. So some of you may have already seen some of this, right? But those are the next, uh, those are the next steps in this process to get, help get us ready for April 1st, right? This will be tied in with the strategy work that's ongoing um, to help us feed into and decide what it is we're doing and what we're presenting to FDC. Uh, that said, um, I'm gonna leave this here and uh, pass it off uh, to the next speakers, Rob and Kim, uh, but I will be here for questions uh, after this as well. So uh, thanks everybody. There we go, thank you. And thanks for everyone who showed up for the Wikimedia Developer Summit. For those of you who don't, don't, don't know what the Wikimedia Developer Summit is and who we are, I'm Rob Lanfear and this is Kim Gilles. And uh, the Wikimedia Developer Summit was a three-day event in it, here in San Francisco, um, Monday through Wednesday of last week. Uh, the first two days were off at the Mission Bay Conference Center where we had a lot of of conversations about the future of the Wikimedia software. And then the third day was here at our office where we had a lot of impromptu conversations. Um, the venue uh, it was a nice venue for the first couple of days. It was roomy and allowed for a lot of parallel conversations. How, Kim, how did, how did you guys pick the, uh, how did you all pick the venue for, for the event? Well, we had worked in this venue the past year, actually in San Francisco. Picking a venue is a bit of an overstatement because it is very, very difficult to find locations. Uh, so I guess Rachel Farron, who basically has worked 
was working on all the logistics. I don't think she didn't have much margin. Uh, but in any case, it's a very good venue. We have been working now for two years. We, we know each other. We are happy with it. Yeah, it was a it was a great venue indeed. So um, so our plan. Well, we didn't really have a plan. We made which made people a lot of people uncomfortable, myself included. Uh, but it was a great reminder of all of the work that we have to do, and and a great reminder that the having a lot of mission driven people working together on a common goal, uh, you can get a lot done. And uh, it was. Uh, I guess I would call it an unconference. What would you agree that it was? Un or, uh, certainly, Valerie helped us uh, describe it and, and uh, helped taught us how to do it. But so first of all, we didn't have a plan. Is a way to say that we are open to improve our plan every year uh, through the survey. No, it's not an euphemism. It's, it's it's true. It's true that we didn't have a plan. It is true that every year we are doing our best to improve what we have been doing based on the survey results. So if you haven't filled your survey, do it. And, and then, yes, uh, actually we ended up having a mix between uh, rigidness and, and all the filtering for some pre-scheduled sessions. And I think that set the stage for the other part, which was an unconference, but I think it led, the combination led to a high, average high quality of, of sessions both sides, pre-schedule and, and, and conference. Yeah, I, 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 I believe that it was a really great conversation, a lot of a great set of conversations that we had. We uh, had roles assigned to everybody and we learned how to have discussions, I think, in a way that we really hadn't been productive at before. We have got all the, all the fresh feedback we've got right after the event has been exactly in this direction, that in terms of work done, topics discussed, outcome, documentation, uh, there's been a, a, a huge improvement over previous years. Mm -hmm. And um, so we, and on the wiki page, we had 173 people uh, that, uh, the registered attendees that were here. On, on the, the Wikidev 16 page, we talk about this as, as a kickoff for ongoing conversations in 2016. And, uh, and that's, for, that's certainly for the 173 people that were here, but we see this as conversations with everybody in the world who is interested in Wikimedia software, Wikimedia technology. Uh, and so how do you see the participation continuing with respect to uh, the ongoing conversation? So in, in the short term, basically the, the, the summit was defined as a, as a point in time. There's some important discussions we are having. Uh, most of the discussions didn't start at the summit, where they were ongoing at the, before the summit. And, and the idea is that there were no decisions explicitly. We didn't want to have a summit for decisions because not everybody was there. So we expect those topics to continue being discussed. And, and, and all this plugs very well with uh, exactly with the topics that Lila and Luis have explained before. This needs to plug with the overall strategy, needs to plug with, with our annual plans. And a lot of the conversations we're continuing in part in, um, on, our, uh, on our mailing lists and on our discussion tools. We've broken this down and we've broken down the, so the discussions about our software into several areas with people specializing, like people figuring out which areas that they're most interested in, uh, in learning more about and also participating in addressing. So, uh, so the first area is in collaboration, which is basically how do we play well together and uh, basically making it so that we can have a lot more developers that uh, work on the Wikimedia software. Uh, we have the software engineering area, which is about making what we're asking people to collaborate on, making that make sense. Uh, the uh, user interface presentation, how do we make our software useful and beautiful and a joy to work with? The, you'll see up here, there's little uh, uh, numbers up at the top of this. These are the uh, fabricator task numbers. So if you know, to, if you're interested in a particular area, you can go, go to the fabricator task area and start, it, like, participate, start participating in the conversation right there. Um, and uh, content access and APIs, this is really about how do you 
get access to the data on our sites and have the ability to replicate it, to download it for your own use, to, um, to, do, to use the information from our sites. And then the format, content format area, is about how we store the data, the authoritative source of the data, things like wiki text, the, 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 and how we allow people to manipulate the, that uh, information. And so those, um, those are the areas. And uh, thank you to everybody who is on the uh, organizing team. And uh, Kim, any uh, parting co comments? Well, yes. I mean, the, the thank you is a real thank you. So we are here because someone had to come here and take the mic. But uh, even the concept of, of an organization team is very flexible because none of that would, I mean, if people is happy, of course, it's because there was a nice venue and whatnot. But if people is really happy about this event, it's because area owners, facilitators, gatekeepers, thank you. And uh, that's my personal wording. Uh, note taking was excellent. I've seen great developers that be super active in many sessions. They chose to actually listen, write down things with all the position they can write. And this is what makes the whole difference. And it's what brings a lot of the money we have invested in this big event actually has more value because now all this information is available and those discussions can just continue. Exactly. Thank you. And also thank you for Valerie. It was a last, last minute uh, addition to the team. And I think she made a whole difference with the game of cards and, and other tricks to keep sessions relevant. Thank you. And now, and now we'll hand it off to Boriana. Hi, everyone. see the time. Oh. Hi, so I have five minutes to go over the survey results of the 2015 engagement survey. All of you have seen the results already, so this is no news to you. And we've discussed some of the stuff, but we thought that it would be a good opportunity to present uh, the results in the metrics uh, meeting as we have done in the past. This year, uh, this year we ran, or last year, 2015, we ran uh, the survey, the third survey, uh, third party survey provider called Cart A Culture Amp. It's really good to um, run engagement surveys to, uh, through a third party provider. It's really best practices and the reason is that there's a lot of confidential information about employees and also what the employees are saying so it's good to keep that. The participation was amazing. 93%, 226 uh, people took the survey and out of those 194 left almost 1,900 comments so that was great. Quick comparison, in 2013, the participation rate was 58, 66 in 2012, 84 participants um, then. In 2014, as you know, we, there was no engagement survey. The overall uh, score of the engagement survey was 63%, which is 7% below um, industry average. And when I say industry average, uh, that is an um, industry benchmark that Culture Amp selected for us. And I provided some more information about um, what types of organizations go into this bucket if um, you're interested in that. So that's below here. In 2013, uh, the engagement was 71%, and it was 71% in 2012 also. One thing to note is that we used a different survey provider in 2012, 2013, which means we also asked uh, different questions. The format was slightly different. And the reason for that is that when we decided to start the initiative from the survey, um, the HR team um, actually here internally recommended that we consider switching to a different provider um, because I guess the service of the previous provider was not, it was not as good. So we took it as an opportunity to go out there and look for someone new. So far, Culture Amp has been 
really great. We did a lot of research, obviously, before picking them, and so far we're very happy, which is important because I hope that we can use the same survey providers, same type of questions going forward, so we can start looking at the trend line. I also want to share the high-level positives and negatives that the survey um, showed. And uh, these are a summary of the ratings and the comments in the survey. On the positive side, our mission, right? It's something very unique about this organization. Culture AMP also was um, highlighting it. Everyone is here for the right reasons. Everyone loves the mission. Uh, they say that it's inspiring, it's amazing. They're here for the mission. And um, I think it's, it's not to be take, taken uh, for granted that we have a mission that we can be here for, right? The second one is a little more practical, uh, flexible work arrangement. So we have um, this one day a week that we can work from home or work remotely, and people are taking advantage of that and really enjoying it. So that's one thing that was very popular. And then the personal relationships between managers and employees. People feel like they have really good relationship uh, to their manager, communication is good, and they feel comfortable talking to them. This is not to be taken for granted that other uh, friend service other places, and this is not as good as we have it here. On the other side, the harder parts of managing, uh, managing, managing performance uh, came up as a negative. So there's some good thing about the employee-manager relationships, and there's some things that we need to work on. So since I'm already going um, on the other side, I guess on the negatives, aggressive communications came up. So we have a lot of work to do um, internally to improve that. Performance management, leadership development. So there's a lot of improvement to be done uh, in, on the leadership level. And the WMF has already, already taken some steps in improving that, and we're definitely uh, taking that very seriously. And we will reassess in a few months um, to see if uh, the solutions are working. On the strategy side, um, there was um, a lot of comments about there needs to be more clarity around the strategy and diversity. We need to spend more time on more time and energy and thought on diversity and continuously improving that. We really need to um, focus a bit more. I also want to share some of the next steps. Um, HR, and I'm working with um, a group of employees internally to find solutions that are appropriate for this environment. And we will also be working on training um, managers, so rolling out some training for managers to help with performance improvement. Executives are working on improving communication and transparency. And actually, Lila spoke about this earlier, but we are working on the, uh, on the strategy. And next week, a community consultation is starting. So that's the next phase of that. And then finally, I would really love to see a comprehensive diversity initiative this year. Just end to end, looking at all of our processes, looking at everything and making sure that we do all we can uh, to invest in that. That's all I had on the engagement survey, and I want to take a moment with Lynette to talk about the, actually, maybe, Lynette, do you want? Thank you. Thank you, Boriana. For... I just wanted to take two minutes to do this. Um, thank you for allowing us time. I wanted to take a minute to thank Hytham and Trevor for being such great partners on this event. They brought the talents and their leadership to the project in all ways. They were open, available, committed, and we early on defined the goals for the event and our trust and commitment to each other. Thank you. Uh, Katie, Amy, and Pat really took on the commitment of, of organizing the content for each day. Katie. Uh, the lead on the unconference and Amy and Pat working with um, workshops and, and, and surveys and 
figuring out what we wanted to do. Heather bringing her design and communication expertise and her candor to the team. Uh, Janet expertly managing our services and contracts, meeting business needs and work, reworking the contracts to meet the goals of how the event was shifting and changing. I want to thank Robert, Brendan, and Lamiley and Athena for being here the day of managing uh, equipment uh, at the Bentley and managing all of us here. Um, and I also want to take just a minute to um, have all of them stand up, please. Please stand up. Yeah. did an unconference, and then everybody, maybe the organizing committee can stay in a minute. If you did an unconference session or a session at the Bentley, please stand up. Thank you. Those of you that did any sessions here at the unconference or a session at the Bentley, you don't want to stand up. You don't. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm trying to say something here. And if you were a host or registration, anyway, we had over 35 folks help put together this event. And I want to thank all of you. I want to thank the C team for allowing this to happen and trusting in your colleagues. And I want to thank all of us for participating, engaging, and connecting in a way that we can do things better together. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kevin LaDuke, and I'm the manager of special projects. And I am going to talk to you about some metrics that were recently released last month in December. So we released a page view API. So in the past, we did publish page view data. And it was in the forms of files that were released every hour. And they contain page views for every article that hour. And they were 100 megabytes in size. So if you were a researcher or you had a large computing platform, this was great. Wonderful knowledge. But if you were a programmer without these resources, it was like looking for needles in haystacks. So API stands for Application Programmer Interface. And on your left, you'll see what a programmer would send to a computer or servers. And on the right, the response. So what I've highlighted in yellow are parameters you can configure. So here I'm asking for English Wikipedia. I want desktop site, mobile site, all access. That's what it means. For users, not bots or spiders, the main page on January 1st, how many page views? 16 million on that day. So for programmers, they can build a lot of really neat and useful applications. And the community has been asking for this data for a long time in this format. So I'm going to show a couple of examples here. One is a sample application that the, uh, the analytics team developed. And we can see that. Darth Vader had a pretty constant following, but Kylo Ren overtook him. He was virtually unknown, but overtook him once the Star Wars movie came out. And also, there's a dip on Christmas Day. People were doing other things. Yeah. So other things that you can do, we also release um, the top articles for every project that we have. And here on January 11th, once David Bowie passed away, um, he was the most popular. Uh, article that day. And we can tell that people did not just read his article, they also went on to read about his wife, Iman, and his son, Duncan Jones. Um, so this site is called Hat Note, um, and uh, it's actually a, an amazing way to visualize the top 100. Um, it's also available in Urdu. And uh, I highly recommend you want to see it. So if you want to find out more about this, I highly recommend you go find the blog post on uh, the Wikimedia's blog post and look for PageView API, and it will have all this information and more. Thank you. OK, now we have time for Q&A. As we started a few minutes late, we're going to allow a, a little bit of extra time for this. Um, as always, if you have a question, uh, please go to the mic halfway back on the left-hand side of the room. Um, and I'll help uh, get mics to people who can give answers. Hey, a uh, question from IRC, uh, Lila, to start with. Um, 
Edward asked, there was a comment on a mailing list about having a strategy for the movement separate from the strategy for the foundation. I wonder if this is being considered. There was follow-on talk discussing about how starting a strategy for the whole movement right now is, seems like it would be very rushed, so. Yeah, thank you, actually, who, who brought that up? So that was Edward. Edward, thank you for bringing it up. I actually should have addressed it when I was talking. Uh, and I started actually drive, drafting a response to the mailing list, but it's been just a really, really busy week. So I apologize that I haven't responded yet. I actually, uh, personally, I, uh, I really think I endorse uh, that, uh, that thought, and I think it would be really valuable. Um, I also worry that it shouldn't be the WMF driving the movement strategy overall. We should be in a supporting role, and, uh, and our volunteers and community members should be the ones that are, um, are putting their thoughts forward. I do think it would be very valuable to have a movement strategy. I don't necessarily think that they need to be time-wise completely in alignment, because I think we can synchronize whenever the, uh, the strategies are ready. Uh, from the WMF perspective, we absolutely need to have um, more collaboratively created, but also more clarity as we go into this annual planning process. Uh, and we also have to be responsible for what we can do, accountability uh, towards our community and towards the world overall from the perspective of the WMF is really important. So I think it, having those two strategies aligned and, in, in, uh, and connected is really important, but I think uh, I completely endorse and you know, WMF would be, uh, would be happy to support it. Um, I have a somewhat awkward question, I'm afraid. Um, I was surprised to see that characterization of the engagement survey results, especially considering what's been posted recently on the signpost and the Wikipedian about such numbers as 10% uh, staff confidence in executive leadership. Um, on the subject of accountability, um, I would love to see constructive change. What key metrics are being used to assess the performance of our leadership and what is the timeline for them? And to be clear, I am not talking about transparency or communication, which were mentioned, but about um, deeper concerns. Um, I don't know whether Bar whether Boriana is the appropriate one to answer this or not. I'll, I'll take the second part of the question um, that specifically uh, talks about executive leadership and how we measure executive leadership. So what we're doing actually in the annual plan is we're become, we're making it really clear about what our man measurements are and what are our KPIs, both at the executive level and organizational level. And of course, those two work together. So um, you can see, you'll be able to see exactly how we measure ourselves. In terms of the immediate uh, responses, and, and I'll let Brian talk a little bit more about that. Um, there are specific things that were brought up in the survey. One of them is strategy, see that addressed. Uh, uh, another of them was, uh, uh, was predictability, management, just general management things, and uh, that's, uh, that's something that we've been uh, addressing even over the last uh, month or so, almost immediately, um, in terms of providing transparency and accountability towards, uh, towards our projects. Um, you, there's, uh, there's a weekly update and things like that going out. So you can actually see some of the measurements uh, internally on uh, Office Wiki, and I'll be happy to reshare it with everybody if, uh, if people don't see it. Um, yes, thank you. Perhaps I've missed it, but I haven't, um, as, as I've been looking around, I haven't seen any metrics that were um, specifically towards executive performance. So if they are there, I would love to see them. Thank you. Thank you, and I will share it uh, in the next uh, weekly update, update so that it's on top of your mailbox. Hi, um, I have a question, or rather a clarification um, that I want to address to Luis and, and uh, Lila about the interplay of the strategic process and the annual planning process. Um, I think that most people I, I, I spoke to uh, welcome the idea of uh, you know, playing by the rules and being transparent. I myself am very excited that we're going through this process for the annual plan. Um, the, 
the timing of these two processes is uh, interesting and concerning. You know, many people have asked questions about how this is going to effectively play out. Um, as you know, we have a deadline on February the 3rd to submit, uh, like hard deadline to submit uh, our um, final uh, recommendations from individual teams about core activities. The strategy plan is going to take much longer. So uh, a word of clarification will be useful, I guess, uh, for, for this group. Sure. sure. So um, let me speak first to that, uh, to the very specifics of that, and let me get up in the taped area so that the AV folks will be happy. <laughs> um, the So speaking first to that February 3rd deadline, right? Um, for those of you who have been, uh, who have seen the full schedule, which again, your, your department leads will be sharing, if they haven't already, they'll be sharing with you soon. Uh, what's due on the third is specifically about core activities, right? Those that are highly unlikely to be impacted by uh, strategic choices, right? So like keeping the servers running, there's essentially no plausible strategy that will um, uh, that will involve us, you know, turning off servers in mass, right? Um, so the idea is that we stagger this so that we can get that work out of the way early, right? Now, while the strategic work is still going on, and we can do uh, and things that are more intimately tied to what we're seeing out of the strategic process, uh, the deadline for that is later, right? I don't have the date off the top of my March. head, but uh, March, March something. That said, let me speak to your broader, let me speak also to your broader concern, right? Um, in an ideal world, uh, this would have been staggered much more cleanly, right? The reason we, you were seeing strategy emails on like Christmas Eve practically um, was because, uh, you know, we made this decision late, right? I'm not gonna, I, there's no way for me to defend that like, oh yeah, we just decided in December, that would be a great time to run strategy. Uh, you know, what happened was we looked at our commit, we looked at the commitment to FTC, we looked at the commitment to have some public strategy that was vetted so that FTC would not, you know, would not just say, okay, where did this strategy come from? Uh, and we worked backward from there, right? Um, in an ideal world, we would have started that much earlier. As you know, and as Lila has pointed out, we've uh, we started some parts of the strategic process, you know, in like January of 2015. I mean, my, my first week on this job in February of 2015 was sprinting on strategy questions, right? So we were we're working on that for a while, um, but you know, I mean, we were driven by these deadlines. I think is the is the fairest, shortest way to put it. Rambling for too long. Does that? Uh, I guess partly there will be many questions. I guess in a couple of weeks. I guess the one point I want to bring up is the fact that. Uh, um, the, the finalization of uh, the budget request for core activities is before the discussion about the strategic activities. So in a way, um, there's, there will be no way for the strategic discussion uh, to inform what we already pre-allocated uh, after the uh, submission of a budget for core activities. That's one, one additional point that uh, I think collectively we should clarify. We, we should take this offline. Probably. Yeah, well, let's take this offline because we tried to sync those up as much as possible if there's been, um, but I haven't looked at the exact sync in a while, so I, I can't answer that right now anyway. Uh, Lila's asking for the mic though, so maybe she can. Um, actually, that, that was by design uh, because strategic uh, priorities should not be affecting our, um, should not affect the core, core priority, uh, core or maintenance priorities, just like Lewis was, was talking about. We'll still have to be doing par payroll. We'll continue have to uh, maintain the servers, you know, those, those kind of things. And that's why they're staggered the way they are. We're going to publish full um, schedule for the annual plan on Meta this week. So you'll be able to see the detail of the, uh, of the timeline. As I said before, we're going to run a couple minutes over because we started a few minutes late. James, are there more questions from IRC? Yep. Uh, Lila, is there a plan to evaluate the strategy process? Do you have APIs for the strategy process so we can iterate and improve? Or non-APIs? There was other discussion in IRC. Small. Yeah, how well the strategy process works. Um, so we were planning to do a retrospective at the end. We don't have specific APIs, um, but I'm definitely open. We are, we are the team are definitely open to hearing um, uh, if there are uh, specific APIs that people are, uh, can think of, think of and 
um, you know, any recommendations on that we would definitely uh, take in. But retrospective is the minimum that we do um, at the end of any, any complex process like that. Okay, and we'll take our last question from the mic here. Okay, this is also an, another awkward question. Uh, my understanding is that WMF Human Resources was a key part of the board search this round, and that Arnon Gashuri, one of the new board members, interviewed with the executive director. Did staff here at the WMF know about Gashuri's involvement in illegal collusion? And if not, how is that missed in the background research? I'll take it. Um, so I interview every, uh, personally, I interview personally every uh, board members, just like uh, board members interview prospective board members. So there is no de deviation from the process. The board will respond. This is, this is a board process uh, that the board ultimately runs, and staff is in the supporting role. So HR personnel supports the board throughout this process. Um, we do not currently have a PR check. Uh, as part of the process for any of the board trustees, um, uh, it's it was not yeah. <laughs> um, it's it was not part in a, it's not something that come up in the standard background check which we conduct on every um, uh, on every trustee. So that's that's what I can say. But the board uh, board will respond more with more. Great, thank you. Okay, we're at time. Thank you for your questions and for your participation for joining us online. That's it for today. Thanks.